Hello there, welcome. Welcome back if you've been here before. If you haven't and you like Synapse stuff and you like Fabric stuff, hit that subscribe button because that's what we do here. I'm excited in this video because although Ignite is going on at the moment, lots of exciting stuff around Fabric going generally available. All the services, lake houses, warehouses, Power BI, all that good stuff getting lots of attention in there. It's one thing that's been announced and yeah, always, always excites me to see a new certification. And we've got that one here. We have the Microsoft Certified Fabric Analytics Engineer Associate, which is backed by one exam, the DP600, which sounds familiar because there was a DP500. Titles are quite interesting. So the DP500 was the Azure Enterprise Data Analyst Associate. This one's got Analytics Engineer. So they're kind of bringing in some of that uh, new terminology in terms of the data engineering and the data analyst side of things. Put in Analytics Engineer, which is interesting. It's interesting to me in that. What I like to do is I like to break things down a little bit from the certification. So we're going to have a look at the actual page itself. It's got a whole bunch of skills listed and we'll go through them. We'll cherry pick a few. What I would say is if you're after a comparison between the DP600 and the DP500, then I've got a link to Data Mozart, Nikola Illich, my friend, he's done a side-by-side -side comparison of the DP500 and the DP600 to root out those differences. Really, the differences come down to DP500 has got Synapse Analytics, DP600 has got Fabric. So if we have a little look at the skills breakdown, and again, with all of these certifications, they tell a story. And for me, it's the easiest way to break it down. Because sometimes you come at these exams and you think, wow, there's a lot of stuff there that I've got to go through and learn. There may be, but it all follows a logical flow. So we've got four main categories. We've got plan, implement and manage a solution. Right? That actually only accounts for 10 to 15%. Once we've planned, right, and we know what kind of solution that we're going to build, we can start to work with the data. So the next, which is a big section, is prepare and serve data. Now, that's the section that's got things like your lake houses, your warehouses, pipelines, notebooks, data flow, Gen 2s. So that's going to be where you're going to do that, uh, yeah, that data engineering work. Once we've got data loaded into lake houses and warehouses, well, what do you do with it? There you go. Part three, semantic models, or what used to be called data sets. So now we're going to load those semantic models or query the lake house and the warehouse using those semantic models. So we're going to be building models with measures and relationships, hierarchies, so on and so forth. And then what you're going to do with the semantic model when you've built it? Yes, you're going to explore and analyze, although some of that analyze is also down in the lake house and warehouse. There's more skills being measured than that DP500. So the DP500 had about 49 individual skills being measured. We've got a, th a few more thrown in for good measure in the DP600. When we're looking at where this role sits, in an organization, it's pretty much exactly like DP500. Smack bang in the middle where you're talking to solution architects, data engineers, data scientists, Power BI analysts, DBAs, and AI engineers. Nothing has changed there from how Microsoft see this fabric analytics engineer position fitting within an organization. And yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. If you're building out data solutions in Synapse, you're going to be talking to these people. If you're building out data solutions in Fabric, same people, right? You might also be talking to your local friendly Synapse engineer 
if you've also got Synapse and Fabric. Ultimately, the big picture of an exam like this is, for me, super helpful to get a bit of context. Tying everything together, all those skills measured. Yes, you're going to go down into the, uh, the fine detail in what each of those skills do. But if you get an overall picture of what you're expected to know, it really helps. So for me, look, you're going to be expected to understand around fabric environments and capacities. That's kind of in that first part, that planning and implementing phase. Then we've got pipelines, we've got data flows that load warehouses and lake houses. Notebooks, when you're working with lake houses. So the loading methodologies available within Fabric and the platforms that they're landing in, warehouses and lake houses, in there. Then we can move on into semantic models and reports. So I always like to get an overall picture of what, of what that exam and certification is about. It wants you to understand how all these artifacts and items tie together, how to get data into warehouses and lake houses, how to serve those into semantic models and get reports out to the business, which ultimately is what you're, you know, what you're there for. And the good thing is those end-to-end -end solutions, and I'll put the link to those in the video, go a long way to helping you understand how these items link together. So, for example, in the lake house, I did take the picture from the official Microsoft documentation, so tiny bit blurry. But ultimately, that lake house in the middle is getting data from somewhere. So you've got pipelines, you've got data flows, you can transform with notebooks and also data flows as well before consuming within Power BI. Same thing with the warehouse. The warehouse, you've got that warehouse being loaded from pipelines, from data flows, no notebooks, yeah, not dealing with notebooks in terms of warehouses, but we're dealing with procedures, we're dealing with SQL within the warehouse. And again, once we've loaded the warehouse, off we go down to Power BI to serve that data up. So like I said, it helps to get an overall context into what the kind of certification is. Now let's jump into the web page itself and have a look at what we're dealing with. So there we go, Microsoft Certified Fabric Analytics Engineer Associate. This isn't going to be available until January 2024. So we've got, well, there's not much of 2023 left. So we've got a few weeks left. What's interesting about the certification, it is really coming hot on the heels of the platform itself. So it's gone GA, but it's really only been in public preview for a few months. So the two ways in which I think are valid ways of approaching certification are, number one, if you're already experienced, you, you want to plug some gaps and you want some recognition for that experience, certifications are very useful. On the flip side, if you're coming at something new and you want to learn about something, I think the certifications, with all of those skills measured, give you a bordered approach to learning. This is going to be the latter, right? Because it's only been out for a few months. So this certification is going to be both a learning exercise and based on experience as you go along with it. Anyway, so it's going into details with um, lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, data flows, pipelines, so on and so forth. You're going to have to work with data modeling, data transformation, Git. They say exploratory analytics. Not sure how that manifests itself yet. And then you SQL and PySpark in there as well. If I scroll down, Certification is backed by the one exam, the DP600. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to click in to the DP600. Page looks pretty similar to the certification page. Yes, it's going to be in beta. So if you do take the beta exam, you got to twiddle your fingers. It's going to take a while for the results to come out. Hopefully they could be a little bit quicker. 
So that's just one thing to, to take a note of. You don't get immediate feedback on if you passed or not, which can be a bit, ah, I want to know whether I've passed. If we scroll down, this is the crux, the study guide. Yeah, this is the thing that's going to help you understand what you need to know. Usually it was a PDF document that you can download, but now it's in the Microsoft documentation. It's in the credentials area and we can scroll down. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every single skill being measured because we've got a bit of time to flesh out what each of these skills measured is asking you to do. And more than likely, for each of those skills measured, there's going to be some documentation somewhere that tells you how to do that skill. Yeah, this isn't something that is just constantly trying to throw you a curveball and catch you off guard. There's going to be material pointing to each one of these skills being measured. So there we go. So we've got our plan, implement and manage a solution. Okay, so we've got things like, I like the way they uh, they spell out SKUs, stock keeping units. So understanding the fabric capacities, those F capacities, F2, F4, F8, etc. We've got some settings for the fabric admin portal, a gateway type. Interesting, considering that really at the moment, we've really only got uh, data flows Gen 2 that can support on-premises. And then throwing in a, a custom Power BI report theme in there as well. That's interesting. We've got permissions. We've got access controls, data sharing for warehouses and workspaces, sensitivity labels. So all of those things that uh, surround the data itself. We've got source control because we have version control or source control within Fabric workspaces. What caught my eye was create and manage a Power BI desktop project, the uh, PBIP. Yeah, so you're going to have to learn and understand how that works as well. Yes, we've got downstream dependencies, so bringing in some of that lineage. And then we get to the chunky part, which is the prepare and serving data. So look, ingesting data by using pipelines, data flows, notebooks, Yes, shortcuts. So when you're creating shortcuts from lake houses to other lake houses and warehouses. File partitioning for analytics workload in a lake house. That's bringing in some of that medallion architecture stuff. And then copying data. So yep, using data pipelines, data flows, notebooks, so understanding data flows, understanding pipelines and notebooks front and center in this certification. But yes, store procedures as well, because warehouses, we can use SQL to load and transform data in warehouses. And there we go in the transform data, star schema, Kimball, dimensional modeling, type one, type two, slowly changing dimensions, bridge tables, denormalizing data, so on and so forth but converting data types by using SQL and PySpark. Got some optimizing performance. This is when things start getting interesting because you've got identifying and resolving issues with delta table file sizes. Maybe that's going to feature things like optimize and vacuum. Now we've got the semantic models. Now this is the bit where it looks largely the same, the DP500. Like I said, Nicola, Data Mozart, goes through the comparisons there. That pretty much looks the same, except we've got choosing a storage mode, including direct lake. So we've got the new direct lake functionality, that uh, zippy fast uh, import like performance, but with direct query latency. So there's going to be that in there as well, because there's some cases in which Direct Lake won't work. So maybe there's going to be some questions about scenarios in which Direct Lake will work and when it's going to fall back to Direct Query. But like implementing a star schema for a semantic model. So all that modeling that you do within semantic models. Look, we've got row level security and object level security. 
We do have DAX Studio and Tabular Editor 2, so there are some external tools, but there's nothing really front and center in terms of external tools there. And then the last thing was we've got Explore and Analyze Data. Now, it has Implement, Descriptive, and Diagnostic Analytics to see how that pans out in terms of what you're being measured on. But we've also got querying data by using SQL. So we've got querying a lake house using SQL and the visual query editor and the warehouse as well. But also using the XMLA endpoint. So structure wise, very, very similar to DP500. Content wise, obviously different because DP500 concentrated on Synapse and how to load using Synapse. Pipelines is interesting because in Synapse we have pipelines and in Fabric we've got pipelines as well. So there's a lot of crossover there in terms of, uh, in terms of that feature. But I, I'm on board with the naming. I do like the fact that they've gone with analytics engineer because yes if you're dealing with lake houses and warehouses but you're also dealing with semantic models well that fits an analytics engineer or the what is the widely accepted set of skills that an analytics engineer uh, has fits really nicely in here so this exam, like I said, it's not coming out until January. So we've got a few weeks to go through and start linking all of these items to various pieces of documentation. That's what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks. So look out for probably another video, probably a couple of blogs in which we'll start to link each and every one of these skills being measured to the relevant documentation for you to go away, learn, Hopefully get hands on if you've got access to a fabric environment. By the time that beta exam comes out, then we may have all the skills that we need for that beta exam. It'll be a few months before the actual exam itself, you know, comes, uh, you know, goes live. Uh, so plenty of time. There's plenty of time for us to go through this and understand what we need to know. So like I said, if you've enjoyed this video and you've not subscribed, then what we do in this channel, what I do is a lot of Synapse, a lot of Fabric stuff. So if that appeals, click that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.